A very good morning to you and welcome, gang, once again to this strong and stable programme. Yes, it's Chris Reardon with another United Kingdom tour, boys and girls. Here I am, just arrived back from church a little while ago. Uh, oh, my God. You... <laughs> I shouldn't leave these here, should I? Not the chocolate biscuits. Who's going to have a go at me now? Oh, my God. I hope Adam the Plumber isn't watching. He'd go mad if he sees these. Don't tell him you saw them, OK? It's our little secret, yes. Oh, we did a new Holy Holy at church today. Oh, it was lovely. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. And then the choir do a different bit. You know, what's that called now? A descant. I like that word. A descant. Say it together. One, two, three, a descant. And then they do a bit and it finishes. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Oh, it's lovely, dear. It's always nice to hear something new, isn't it? It really is, boys and girls. Well, uh, welcome along today. Uh, Vivian was telling me that's the lady who sits... Be uh, she got that joke out again today. She said, have I showed you this yet? And basically, it's a little cart. She keeps it, strangely enough, as a bookmark. And um, it's a little picture... Of two gay, obviously gay guys sitting on the settee, and a little boy comes up to them and says, Dads, I want to come out to you as being Roman Catholic. She finds that very funny. I said, I can't imagine why you keep showing me that, Vivian. And she, she was, she was, I nearly swore it. She was laughing her head off, bless her. We do like Vivian. She's a bit tired at the moment. She wasn't at church last week because her grandchildren came round, and that she keeps having grandchildren dumped on her. Which she doesn't mind, but she finds it very tiring. I know someone like that as well. I know someone else like that. Dear me. We love grandchildren very much. We do. I, have, I don't have any grandchildren myself. Uh, well, yeah, actually, I do. I have one. I, uh, yes, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> I do have one. Uh, but, um, yes, uh, uh, grandchildren. We love little ones, don't we? Don't we? I think it's better being the uncle, though. You know, because when they start mucking around, bye bye, you just go. You hand them back. How much? Well, I get the best of both worlds, don't I? Wonderful. Poor Vivian. She did look very tired this morning. We like Vivian. I haven't done the um, car insurance check thing yet. If you were watching the show yesterday, I've just had a, a re. not a refund, a re. Um, oh gosh, what's it? You know, it's at the end of the year. A, re, a renewal. I've just had a renewal quote for my vehicle, for my spaceship. I don't have a car. I have a spaceship. I do have a spaceship. And they want £739 for it. It's never been anywhere near that high. I don't think I've paid £500 before. What was it last year? Shall I check for you? One moment, please. Trying to connect. Car, car, car. There it is. Hang on. Car. One minute. Oh, look what I've found. Remember those? I've got my tax discs here. Look. They don't do them anymore. Do oh, I can't get it open. How's that open then? Can't get them out. Have you spent your fivers yet? Can't use the paper fivers anymore. Yes, especially you there with them stuffed up in your pillows and under your mattress. I can't get this open. Oh, how annoying is that? I might have to cut. Oh, hang on. No, hang on. What's that at the top there? Aha. Look, tax discs. Yes, remember those. None of those on your cars anymore, is there? Now, what was it last year? One moment, please. That's last year, 2016. Last year, aha. Certificate of Motor Insurance. 2015 to 16. Okay, no, that's last. That's the one before. Conditional offer of fixed penalty. Oh, you don't want to see that one. Uh, <laughs> I'm just such a bad boy. Oh, it don't say the price on here. It don't say the price. Well, I can't remember, but it's never been 500. How can it go up to 700? So I shall be straight on the comparison websites. I meant to do it yesterday afternoon. I haven't had time yet. Uh, well, I, I'm, It'll only be a short show today, I think. I've got still got bits and pieces to do in preparation for my holiday. 
mostly the case is now packed. And when I finished the show yesterday, I went out to Waitrose and uh, got all my food shopping. Because, of course, being in a caravan, I've got a harder caravan in Caister on Sea. And uh, I'm going on a holiday with my nephew and his lovely wife, and their three adorable children, and um, Olivia's carer. Because Oliv Olivia, is uh, she's the severely disabled little girl. She's just turned two years old, actually. And she has a carer, and her carer's lovely as well. Oh, what's her name? Cheryl. I got, get on very well with Cheryl. And she's such a caring person. Yes, OK, she's being paid to do it. I know that. But, you, you know, you, you can tell people, and I'm sure you've come across nurses like this, you know, you can tell people who are who really are caring and it's not so much about the money. I can tell that straight away. She absolutely adores that little girl and she don't take her eyes off her ever. You know, she's always looking at her, making sure she's all right because Olivia needs 24 hour care. See, um, so she's going as well. And I'm really looking forward to it. I've got me food, and I take my own food. You know, they do have a little eating place on site. But, you know, when you go out to these eating places, it tends to be fried food all the time, doesn't it? You know, chips and something. Well, I mean, I like chips very much. I had a nice portion of chips last night. Free in Central Station with lashings of tomato sauce on it. I remember I was in a Central Station once and I got this bottle of tomato sauce and I shook it. And as a top comer, it went everywhere. All up, everyone's shirts and everything. I thought it was hilarious. People weren't pleased. They start handing you dry cleaning bills and things like that. No sense of humour, some people. No sense of, talking of dry cleaning bills. I wish Jeremy Corbyn would clean that bloody jacket of his. For God's sake, man. Wear something nice. <laughs> um, so, uh, in, in caravans, you have all your own cooking facilities. That's why I love it so much. I can eat my own food. No, don't need to eat any of that foreign crap. No, dear. We're not eating Chinese and Indian. No, only chips and English food. Thank you. So I've got two carrier bags full of food downstairs. I always take too much food. You know, and on the last day, I'll be taking half of it home again. And an extra toilet roll. Got to take toilet rolls as well. Uh, what else? Uh, washing up liquid. Towels. They don't have towels. The bedding is provided. I was tempted this time to take uh, one of my mattress toppers. I have I have a cheap one, which is very good, but the, the only thing is the feathers come through. You know, and you're laying on there, and I, oh, oh what's it? something's scratching me, and a feather has come through. I don't want to take my John Lewis mattress topper, though, you know, just in case there's bed bugs. Oh, the four, uh, John Lewis would never let me let, let it down, would they? They'd be on the phone. Uh, is that right? That you've got bed bugs in one of our is one of our mattress tops. What if I picked up bed bugs accidentally and brought them home? Oh, oh, I'm crawling now. Oh, what a horrible! Thought. Have you ever had bed bugs? Oh, nasty little being, not evil things. They hide, you know. You never find them during the day. They hide in the most strange place. They don't hide in the bed. Oh no. No, they hide in the tops of curtains and, and at night they come down and they crawl down your wall and enter your bed and start biting you. <laughs> yes. So I'm not taking my John Lewis mattress, but I might take, I was going to take the cheap one. But then I thought, you know, the beds in these caravans have generally been quite comfortable, except the last one. For some reason, I, I wasn't comfortable in the last one, but they are, just, I might not bother. They are quite heavy things, mattress toppers. If you haven't got, most people haven't got one, but they're like that thick. And if you imagine like a heavy duvet, but four of them put together, that's a mattress top when you put it on top and it's nice and soft and all that. Of course, if the bed, this, this actual bed, it wasn't so, it wasn't so, it was more saggy. You know what I mean? A little bit, a little bit like my breasts, to be honest. Oh, what's that? That's someone at my door, you see. That when, that, there's, there's no one at ringing the bell. It tells me there's someone has walked past, usually a cat. A cat usually walks past and sets the old alarm off there. Talking of saggy, talking a bit saggy, look at this in. <coughs> this morning's Super Saw Away, which which paper is this? The Independent. I'm taking note of our good friend on the radio, uh, Nick Abbott, who says that we should get the news from many different sources. You know I'm a big fan of the Daily Mail. I love the... Uh, oh, how can you read the Daily Mail? Oh, they're so... Uh, oh, go away. Because I like it. I read what I like. 
Not what you tell me, if you don't mind. But Nick Abbott says that we should get our news from many different sources. So I'm trying to do that for you on this programme now. Yes. And um, in this morning, talking of things drooping, in this morning's Independent, it says a condition which can affect up to half of all men treatment for, oh, my God, genascomastia or man boobs is most commonly known is on the rise. Now, I've, I've got these. Look, I, I, do you want me to? No, I can't get it out. Possibly not. Look, look, look. You can see. Oh, hang on. The bloody microphone's in it. Well, look, look. No. <laughs> oh, it's awful. But it's not there. I just ran the waste and everything. I think it's not just man boobs. <coughs> I've got quite a lot now. Hanging on. I've put weight on again. Since since I started eating the crisps and biscuits, biscuits I'm now over 13 stone again. Oh, God. Never mind. Uh, according to this doctor, a leading consulting cosmetic and reconstructive surgeon, the number of British men going under the knife has increased fourfold over the last five years <laughs> to have breast reduction. Breast reduction. <coughs> but despite this, many... Oh, I didn't have this cough earlier. <coughs> you know what that is? on the Because I cycle to and from church on a Sunday. A fly entered my mouth on the way back. I think I've got it out like that. Disgusting things. It, it literally flew into my mouth while I was cycling home. That ain't nice. Sorry, that isn't nice. Not nice at all, that flies in your mouths. Um, but despite this, many men are still being denied treatment on the NHS. You've got to pay for it yourself. While more people are coming forward for help, countless sufferers are left to feel ridiculed or fobbed off as doctors blame unhealthy lifestyles for the condition when it is not often the case. I don't believe that. We're overweight. It's as simple as that, isn't it? Surely. Or is it all this, you know, all these drugs and everything in the drinking water? I believe the pill is, um, you know, the, the, the female contraceptive pill. There's a lot of that in the water. They can't get it all out. I'm sure that's the case. Is that what it is? You see, girls, you're giving us all breasts. Giving us all breasts. But what I don't understand, the fellas like breasts, though, don't they? So why don't they like mine? Why is that? Is there some reason for that? Um, it goes on to say, not necessarily due to diet, <coughs> because more men <coughs> are, de <coughs> are developing the condition, but because more are now willing to talk openly about it. And that's a positive step. I wonder how much it is to have it done private. Let's have a look. Cost of man boob uh, removal? Reduction. Re oh, hang on. Reduction. Let's have a look, see if anything comes up on that. Oh, no, that's not that's not worked. Well, oh, hang on a minute. Why has my browser changed that blaster Yahoo thing? Oh, that's... Uh, cost of man boob reduction. Let's have a look. See if we can get it done privately, shall we? Here we are. Maya.co.uk. <clears throat> Let's have a look at that one, shall we? Uh, yes, contact Maya for uh, men. Oh, I don't say. See, don't say the prices. Why don't you say the prices? Fine. Oh, you got finance uh, full payment or finance options? Let me click on full payment. No, it doesn't say. That doesn't say. Hang on. There must be somewhere where it will tell us how much something like this will cost. Then I can book myself in straight away, lovey. <laughs> I can do my waist as well, and my stomach, all at the same time. No, I can't find the cost of it, so I have no idea. Anyone want to have a little look around there and see if they can find anything for it? I, mean, I might book myself in. And we'll film the whole thing as well. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? Let's say hello to some people who are with us this morning. Good morning to the lovely Tanya Sheridan joining us live this morning. Morning, Tanya. Uh, Mary, <clears throat> Irish Mary says, when do you actually go on holiday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, Mary. No rush. That's the beauty of caravan holidays, you see. I intend to leave about 10 o'clock. If I am delayed three hours, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No no plane to miss. No airport. No snotty security stuff. Excuse me, sir. Can we have a look in your bag? Excuse oh, could you stand over there? We want to touch you up. Perverts, dear. 
They're full. They're, it's full of perverts here, Port Lounges, dear. Security. People disguised as security people touching you up as you go through. Dirty bastards. It's wrong, it is. Uh, Mary. <clears throat> so that's tomorrow I'm going, Mary. Good morning to Rod Brown. Morning, Rod. Wendy's with us this morning with a cup of tea. Uh, like a nice cup of tea in the morning. Uh, uh, yes, uh, tea in hand, ready for another you fabulous United Kingdom talk. Here we are, mate. Uh, here we are, Wendy. Uh, good morning to Gustav. Gustav. I'm, I'm going to accent the V now. Because Gustav has complaining that I don't pronounce his V. Gustav says, Morning, lovey, I have a request. Did we ever find out what Ronnie thought of his shoe rack made of glue? Yes, he's very pleased with it, actually, Gustav. He's very, very pleased with it. With my, my handiwork going on there. Thank you very much. Yes. Perhaps there's something that you'd like me to fix for you. Is there, um, is there, Gustav? What would you like me to fix for you? Anything at all? DIY, anything like that. You just let me know, my friend. I'll come down with my screwdriver and my ratchet screw thing. And, of course, more importantly, my little bottle of glue. It fixes everything. You know what else fixes everything? Gaffer tape. Ah, oh, fantastic. Right? A few years ago... Someone's sending little things like that. Look, someone's sending those. Someone's sending those. A uh, few years ago, I had a leak, a couple of leaks in my gutter. Uh, started looking around. You know, I mean, you can buy this plastic stuff, I suppose, in a DIY pl a blooming ladder and all that. Oh, God. And uh, How much will it cost? Well, it's 150 quid to get someone out the door, isn't it? Went up the ladder. Gaffer tape. Oh, yes. First of all, I carefully cleaned out the, the affected part of my gutter. Uh, nice and clean, dried it off, let it in the sun dry for 20 minutes or so. It was bone dry. I got my roll of gaffer tape. Up I went. Stick, stick, cut, cut. Down, back, down we come again. Hasn't leaked since. Gaffer tape is the way forward. I'm sure it would be very useful in doctor's surgeries as well. I had to go to doctor's surgery this week. Incorrect. I rang her up. I rang up the woman at the doctor's. Now, these are my... Oh, come, come, come back over here. These are my anti-acid pills. Okay, look at those. Laprosum... Something like that it was. And um, these <clears throat> I got because I've... You remember, uh, I've been having an acid problem for quite some years now. And I was a bit worried they were, they were going to... Uh, shove a camera down my throat and all this business. So she said to try these. Now, this was back in... Um, just a minute, I can't even see the writing on here, dear. Why is it such small print? One moment, please. Let me just uh, attach my Waitrose £10 glasses. <clears throat> Take one every morning, it says. And they gave me these in December. And I was having a, a very... Uh, uh, um, harsh acid, acid... Just awful... And it, oh, it's especially when you go to bed, it's just horrendous. Anyway, I took one of these. My God, it went. <coughs> and it didn't come back for a while. And then when it came back for a while longer, I took one again. So that's it. And I'm down. I, I, I haven't been having many. So as I say, there's, there's 28, they're capsules, little yellow capsules. There's 28 in here. And they gave these to me on the 20th of December. Right? And I've got... 12, 13. I've got 13 still left here. So obviously I, I hardly take any at all. I have found that if I just take one, that it, it clears it up until the next bout. And I can have weeks between the bouts. But I was down, I sort of had half a box now, so I thought, well, I better order some more. Uh, so, of course, I rang up the um, uh, the surgery and I said, can I have some more of those? Oh, oh, oh. So she's just looking at it. tap, 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 tap. Oh, it's not on your repeat prescription, she says to me. I said, well, I know that. I said, I've only got my movie coal stuff, you know, anti, anti, uh, anti constipation powder I've got on there. And my asthma things, that's the only things I've got on there. Oh, well, I'll have to ask the lady who does the prescriptions to give you a call. Oh, what time would that be? Sometime this afternoon. What time? What, approximately what time? Any time between one and six. Oh, here we go. I thought to myself, OK. OK, thank you very much. Put the phone down. Well, actually, she rang about four o'clock. <clears throat> Oh, hello. Oh, hello. It's Dorothy here uh, at the prescription. What Can I help you at all? Yes, I'm trying to get... 
oh, well, it's not on your repeat prescription. Uh, I said, I know, yes. She said, well, have you tried changing your diet? Um, uh, and perhaps might be an idea to keep it... I'm thinking, just give me the bloody pills, woman, dear. The doctor gave them out to me. Can't you just give me some more? Oh, we had to go for all the rigmarole. And eventually she says, well, I'll get you some more, then I'll put that on the prescription and send it over to the pharmacy. Just give me the pills, dear. God's sake, woman. But they're very good. Now, the instructions on there says take one every morning. <clears throat> But I don't like to take pills unless I'm told to by the doctor. You must take these or you will die. You know, I've got some of those. I've got some of those, all right? Uh, 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 but other ones, I only like to take things unless I absolutely have to. So now, when I feel the acid starting, it doesn't start ferociously. You you can tell... Oh, oh, here we go. And then I'll have one. And it completely stops it dead. So very good, this. Lansoprazo. Gastro resistant tablets. So that was my argument this week with our very, very important receptionist at the doctor. Very important. We're here to make your life as difficult as possible. And you go and see the doctor. Hello, doctor. Can I have some more of those? Oh, yeah, I just write a prescription. And it's done. Not there. No, they want to argue all the time, don't they? Miserable people. Um, thank you very much to those of you who are sharing the show on your walls this morning. This is much appreciated. By the way, I've got a little idea I want to I want to run past you in a minute. <clears throat> it's to do with the show. It's not I'm not actually changing the show at all. But uh, uh, something something is as I've I've spotted a, a new DAB radio station in Surrey and Southwest London. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Let me just do the messages first, and you can tell me what you think. Um, <clears throat> good morning to Diane. Good morning, Diane. Hello, my darling. You're there every morning now, aren't you? Hello, Diane. Just a reminder, when I'm on holiday, probably, I doubt very much we'll do any live shows. Should have some recorded ones for you, OK, while I'm on holiday, and I'll just upload those, and you can watch those uh, as and when. Uh, morning, Rod Brown. Good morning, Rod. Morning to, uh, oh, I've done those two, haven't I? Sorry, I'm, let's go up. Good morning to Craig Hards. Morning, Craig. What, a, what an excellent surname you have. Hards. Hards. I like that. Craig Hards. Good morning, Craig. Good morning to young Lewis. Morning, Lewis. Lovely to see you. Lewis, I think, do you know, I think I'm right in saying you have, in a very short space of time, become the most popular barman there. Lewis is one of the barmen at Central Station. And he's very, because he's happy. Do you know what I mean? He's generally smiling at customers and old Lewis, he loves it when something's going wrong. I watch his face. <laughs> Lewis and I are realising now, he's about, I think he's about 20, 22, 21, 22, but he's absolutely on the same level as me because I can look across at him and he looks at me and I know straight away what he's thinking. Hilarious. Morning. Good morning to Jimmy Butler International. Morning, Jimmy. That's my nephew there saying London 206. Uh, you see, look. Now, Jimmy, he's 20 years old now. His, his car insurance is 900. How is mine at 54 years old now 739? I will do a price comparison and I'll let you know. Hopefully I'll do that sometime this afternoon, but I've got to get my stuff ready as well for the karaoke tonight. Now, tonight is our last karaoke in Sydenham. So if you're coming along tonight, it's 9pm till 12 midnight and it's the last one ever in Sydenham. Uh, the reason being is that it has got a bit quiet over the last month, few months, and now I'm uh, going to be doing a karaoke in Camden Town at the Camden Eye. Uh, that's from Sunday the 21st of May and that will be every week, OK? Oh, sorry, I've got itchy nose now. Oh, 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 itchy nose. All right, so the last karaoke in Sydenham is tonight. That's at the Golden Lawn, Sydenham... Is it Sydenham High Street or Sydenham Road? One of the two, 9pm uh, till 12 midnight, OK? Uh, hello to James Clark. Who says, uh, you need to give him one of your nice, nice jackets. Who do I need to give one of my nice jackets? What, Jeremy Corbett? He can bloody well buy his own. He's not poor. He's not, but everyone thinks, oh, he's one of us. No, he's not. He's loaded. He's loaded, old Jeremy, dear. Don't believe that, oh, we're one of us. I don't think so, darling. None of them are. <coughs> Theresa May's not one of us, is she? She's very posh and we love her. Uh, 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 uh. I want Theresa May in this studio. I would ask her, if I had Theresa May as a little interviewee, but it wouldn't be in it. I don't do interviews, I do chats 
we do just we would talk about what she did as a little girl you know what else would she have done if she didn't uh, didn't do the politics and all that that's what i would do. i wouldn't go politics oh so how are you going to do brexit i wouldn't do any of that dear that's just boring we'll leave that to the newspapers and and, and the people on on the facebook who get all oh, they get ever so upset don't they don't they get upset? Sometimes you can put something that you think is humorous up there. Oh, they go mad. They go mad. Do you know what she did there? Do you know what he did then? Who cares? Who cares? Gustav says, I wouldn't worry about bed bugs, darling. It's not the first time you've come home with a personal lice issue. Pick your pardon. Personal lice? What was that? Was Is that what that smell was around you the other night, Gustav? That special shampoo, was it, darling? Eh? 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 Was it that special shampoo that you're not supposed to wash off, lovey, are you? <laughs> Callum once had scabies. Oh, I bet that's horrible. Don't they get under your skin? Can you see them moving, scabies? Oh, they do, they do. They get under your skin, don't they? So if, you know, if you was to leave it, I said, and how do you treat those? If it's under the skin, is that a pill or what? How does that work? But can you see them moving? Because <clears throat> I've seen stories in the newspaper before about people that have been infected by parasitic worms when they're abroad. You see, you shouldn't go flying to these awful places, dear. Dangerous. You come back with parasites and a crocodile that's bitten a leg off. A giraffe has tripped over and stamped on your head. An elephant has accidentally shoved its, um, sho <laughs> shoved its, um, not horn, shoved its tusk up your ass. Very, very dangerous places going abroad. Stay in the UK. Beautiful places. Pop up to Scotland. Pop up to Scotland. Do yourself a favour and don't bump into Nicola, though. She don't like anyone. I've decided Nicola Sturgeon doesn't like any... And besides, that old dress that she keeps wearing is... I'm telling you, that is alive. It must stink. She don't wear anything else. Just that ghastly red outfit, dear. Awful woman. But go up to Scotland. If you avoid her, you'll be all right. And that fat bloke. Who's the fat bloke? The one who used to be in charge of them all up there. Can't remember his name now. Another miserable old bastard he is, dear. Moan, 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 moan. I can't bear someone who moans all the time. I really can't. Get up to Scotland. Go and have a look around there. Lovely people. Beautiful countryside. Or if you want to go in the city, go and have a look around Edinburgh. Oh, wow. The architecture there. Architecture. That's what we like. Architecture. Uh, good morning to Gavin Matthews. Good morning, young Gavin. One of my new Facebook friends, aren't you, love? I quite like that picture. It's like a cartoon <clears throat> or like a, not a cartoon, like a painting of you, isn't it? It's a painting. Is that like, what, is that an actual painting? Or is it some sort of filter you've put through on a, on a, on a digital picture? It's all digital here. It's all digital here. Morning to Simon uh, Stevens. Moobs. I've got the moobs. I have. You don't want me to get them out on here, do you? I'm not, no, I'm not going to do it. Nope. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, that, yes, Simon, that's right. The fly penetrated my hole on the way back. As I was, I was there, I, I was actually singing that Hosanna because it was in my head. La da 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 da. Ah. And a fly entered my mouth. <clears throat> it must have been attracted, attracted by my sweet singing. That's the only thing I can think of, Simon. It must have been, dear. Good morning to John Aitken. Morning again, John, who says, uh, can you do something about the weather? You must have some connections to sort it out. It's getting me down. Well, you're very used to going down, aren't you, John? Let's be honest. I remember you at trade, my love. You're very used to going down. Can't do anything about the weather. I've been to church this morning, John. I've had a word, and actually the sun is coming out now, which is a good job because the cat's in the garden at the moment. Oh, the cat was good this morning. I was so pleased. As I opened the kit, because I can't actually see where the cat is in the kitchen. Uh, as I opened the door, I, I could smell it. I thought, oh, she's done one. But, and then I approached it, and it's there on the newspaper, but she hadn't yet walked in it. I'm so pleased. So I was able to quickly pick it up and put it in the recycling bin. I don't, I'm not sure if you're supposed to put it in a recycling bin, actually. You know, just remember that. When you open your newspaper tomorrow, you might actually have within that newspaper a little bit of my cat poo. How dreadful is that? 
Scotty Ogilvy in New Zealand. Good morning, Scotty. One of my very, very good friends I used to work with in Belushi's in London Bridge who said, just clicked on your post. Bloody hell, we are in fits about the man boobs. Have you got them as well, Scott? Is it cheaper in New Zealand? Because if so, I'll come over there and have them done. Vivian, who sits next to me in church, she's going to Budapest to have her teeth done. Although they don't look too bad. <laughs> I did notice. <laughs> It, we had a different priest this morning. He was quite elderly. And now and again, he was doing these prayers. And his t you could see his teeth. I don't think he'd put it's, 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 that that dental fix stuff in. I don't think he'd put enough on there. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so Vivian, Vivian's going to have her done in Budapest, her teeth. See, that would worry me, though. What if you come back and start getting infections or something goes wrong? You can't go back again, can you? Do they just have to sort it out in the NHS? I think I'd, I'd rather pay extra money here to have something like that done and then know that I can just quickly get back in my car or on a train and go back into wherever it is and have it sorted out. That's the worry, isn't it, of going to another country and having something done. You know, you could have you could have a replacement leg. I suppose they'd be able to do that one day, wouldn't they? Replacement legs and arms. Perhaps I could have a replacement body. If I could just take this head off, make it a bit younger again like it used to be, and have the body that I had 10 years ago. 50, 20, 20 years ago then. All right then. Uh, good morning to Kevin Webster. He's a bit late this morning. Morning, Kevin. Um... Uh, John Aiken says, I take Lanzoprenol every day for reflux. It was wine causing it, so I've stopped drinking. Much better now. John, um, I tell you, I definitely know one thing that causes mine are the very, very delicious tangy cheese Doritos. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. A bag of those is guaranteed to set it off a little while later. White bread does it. Too many potatoes do it. There are definitely certain things that are worse than others. And once it starts happening, it goes on and on for ages. But taking one of these is just brilliant. So I just have mine as and when. Although it does say on there, I have one a day. But I just have it as and when mine. So um, I'm glad you, uh, you have the same luck as well. Uh, good morning to Paris, who said, I had a dream and I couldn't breathe. So glad I woke up. Well, if you hadn't woke up, you wouldn't have been breathing, would you? Remember that? Paris, oh, there's been a complaint. Oh, yes. There's been a complaint into the studios of United Kingdom Talk Boys and Girls, and it was from said Paris, who's just sent a message, who has the audacity. The audacity. I wished her a happy birthday yesterday, 22 years old, which is what came up on the Facebook. But no, she quickly sent in her letter of complaint, complaining that she's actually only 17 years old. So it's not my fault, dear. I'm going to have to pass the buck, dear. If you are entering the incorrect information into Facebook, what am I supposed to do, lovey? I can't read your little 17-year-old mind, can you? Mind you, who can read a 17-year-old person's mind? What goes on in that thing? It's going round and round. Oh, it's so confusing, dear. You have a mind of chaos, a coalition of chaos in your bra in your mind. Unlike me, myself, I am a strong... Oh, there, goes, there goes the clock indicating that we've moved from AM to PM. Unlike my mind, I have a strong and stable mind. Strong and stable, Paris. You have a coalition of chaos in your little head, darling. But don't worry, you'll grow out of it, my love. Please check your Facebook um, uh, date of birth. I know what it is. Doesn't Facebook, aren't you allowed on there if you're under, is it 13 or 16? You changed your age, didn't you? So you can get a Facebook account years ago. I bet that's what you did, isn't it? <laughs> are you still still telling those people in pubs that you're over 18 years old? I bet you are. You know what? And tell your mum, Paris. I will have to tell your mum. To oh, she's there now. Look, Sharon Stone is Paris's mum. Good morning, Sharon. Morning. Uh, strong and stable. That's me, James. Strong and stable. Uh, Gustav says, go on, darling. Get your tits out for the boys. I beg your pardon, dear. Get your tits out for the boys. This is not a Weatherspoons pub. God's sake, man. Wendy says, 
Tell us about the DAB thing, please, soon. OK, so let me have a sniff. That's better. So let me tell you, uh, there's a, an, a, a radio station that has started and it covers um, uh, Surrey and southwest London and sort of around that, but not the whole of London, just southwest London. Although I've picked it up going on the A40 uh, along the Euston Road. It's called Upload Radio, Upload Radio. And basically, uh, for a price, I think it's about 20 quid. For 20 quid, you can upload your um, uh, radio show to this radio station and they will play it out. Now, I could probably, and I'm thinking about doing that. I th This show used to be audio only. It was a radio show, podcast type thing. And various internet stations used to play out my, my little audio show. And um, the whole video thing was a complete accident. Yeah, it was someone, I can't even remember who it was now. They said, why don't you put a video camera in front of you and, and, and do it as a, as, a, as a video show? Oh, I don't know about that. Anyway, I did it and I just kept it going. And eventually I, I dropped the audio only. Um, only because it was a, a, just a, it's, it's not actually that much more work, but it, it was a little bit much more, more, more work. So I dropped it and I, I dropped the podcast and all that. So it just left us with the video only show. Now, what you're watching probably on Facebook. Some people watch the recording later on YouTube. You can either watch it live or record it on Facebook. Well, as soon as I finish, as, as I finish the live show, it then becomes, it stays on there as a recording, as it, and forevermore, I don't know how long it stays on there. And it also goes up on YouTube as a recording. My YouTube username, incidentally, is youtube.com forward slash uh, Chris Reardon UK. Um, but radio, uh, 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 I, 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 I'm thinking about going on this upload, upload radio thing now. They give you instructions. You have to do two lots of 29 minutes. OK, so, I mean, I would have a clock. If I've got a clock in front of clock, clocks all over the place in it. So I'd have to do two lots of 29 minutes. I would basically do exactly the same as I'm doing now, except make an audio version. And then at the end of 29 minutes, I say, and we'll be back after this. But you wouldn't see a break or anything like that. Then I'd just start again. Hello, welcome back to United Kingdom. Talk. It'd just be like that. And I could do that once a week. You know, 20 quid a week. Who's going to miss that? And besides, uh, I'm self-employed. I could probably write that off um, on tax against advertising. Because obviously I'd be mentioning my karaoke nights and things like that. So I wondered what you thought of that. It's, do you think that was something I should try? 20 quid a week, uh, that would give me a one hour show per week. I mean, I've noticed I did have a lot of a, a little look on there. You can have a look yourself. Upload. I think it's upload radio. Hang on. Let me just double check for you. <clears throat> upload radio. Let's have a look. And the thing is, you want is Where is it now? Live radio online. No, that's not it. Let me find it. Uh, upload radio. There it is. No, hang on. Hang on. Upload. Where is it? Upload radio. I can't find it now. Isn't that funny? Oh, here it is. Upload. No. Maybe. Is it uploadradio.com? Let's just co.uk. Uploadradio.co.uk. Let's guess. Is that going to be it? That's. Yes, that's it. Uploadradio.co.uk. Have a look there. Um, they've got a bit of a schedule. Oh, is it, or is it .com? Oh, there it is, .com, yeah. They've got a little bit of a schedule on there, uh, a listen live and things like that. And there's various people on there, uh, like me, who, for whatever reason, aren't on the radio. Maybe they can't get on the radio. Or like me, I'm a bit too lazy and I, I can't be bothered to start sending off... Um, you know, demo tapes. And besides, you know, I, I, I really don't have much um, faith in myself, really. It was my mother who had a lot of faith in me. She used to push me into doing things. Myself, I don't have faith. You know, if, if it's going to just tell me, for the sake of 20 quid a week, you know, I just send a 20 quid off, do the show that I want to do with no one telling me what to say or anything like that, and Bob's your uncle. I think I might give that a go. So I don't know what you thought about that. Don't know what you think about that. As I say, 20 quid, I can write that off against tax for advertising. Easy. 
No trouble at all. There's some people on there who've got two or three shows a week, and I wondered if they sort of got a like a like a buy two get one deal or something like that, you know. But I could just do one a week, and it wouldn't it wouldn't be any different to what I'm doing now, except I would get uh, I would have to make two twenty minute twenty nine minute bits, and we could carry on after the twenty nine minutes. But those two twenty nine minute segments would be for the radio, and what they do. But why is it two twenty nines? Because they'd have the twenty nine. So what's two twenty nines? Two tw uh, twenty nine thirty nine forty nine fifty five one two three four five six seven eight. Ah, so the one there's one minute there, so that must be for the adverts. Yeah, they probably got a minute for the adverts in the in the middle there. I don't know if they had news or anything like that. What do you reckon? Should I have a go at that? Should we do that? Um, Wendy said, Daniel said, good morning to Daniel in Camberley this morning. Good morning, Daniel. Uh, John says, we have the same clock. Got it in Debenham. Still makes me jump when it does that noise. Oh, that one over there. Yeah, it does. It does that noise twice a day, uh, going from morning to afternoon. And then from night to morning again, you go, eh, goes like that. Wendy reckons I should give it a go. Yeah, I think so as well, Wendy. Got nothing to lose, have we? Give it a go on the uh, DAB. Be quite nice to be on DAB radio. I mean, cost 20 quid, but so what, you know? <laughs> Good. How are we doing? What's the time? Oh, I did say we were only going to do half an hour today, didn't we? Never mind. Uh, what else have I got here to tell you about... Oh, yes, that was it. Uh, a little while ago, you may have noticed I made a post on Facebook. Here is a list of my 10 favourite drag queens, except one that I really hate. Which one do you think it is? Now, the reason I, I do things like this sometimes on Facebook, because I want to show up the real stupidity of some of the stuff that's on there. Because uh, someone obviously decided it was a good idea to put their list of 10 favourite films. Here are my list of 10 favourite films. Which one do you think I like? And it was all, all a bit like that. And then everyone else starts to... Like, bloody sheep they are. Please pass this on. If you pass this on, you will receive £50,000. No, you won't. Please type amen here and you will go straight to heaven when you die. No, you won't. And it's, you know, it's just that, I've, please pass, and you know, you get all the, all the ones that try and make you feel guilty, you know. Please pass this on to make awareness of dementia sufferers or diabetes or cancer people. Please pass this on to raise awareness and all that business. It just does my head in seeing all that stuff. They're just like sheep copying and pasting all the time. So I thought I'd do my own thing. And I did this one on the 10 drag queens. Here is a list of 10 of my favourite drag queens. Uh, except for one that I really hate. Which one do you think it is? Of course, you're getting all these private messages from drag queens, especially those in the list. Oh, it's not me, it's not me. And it's all, you start getting private messages from people. Which one is it, Chris? Tell us which one it is. They're desperate to know. Desperate to know. And guess what? There isn't any of them that I dislike. I just... <laughs> but the creation that that caused was hilarious, dear. People talking, oh, which one does he hate? But I've worked with him for ages. Why does he hate one of us? Oh, it, you don't think it's me, do you? <laughs> I, I just like to show the stupidity up of these people. It really does. Uh, Wendy says, I don't really think you hate anyone. Correct. I didn't hate any of them. But it was just to point that out. You understand what I mean? So that was the list of 10 drag wins. And uh, there is your answer. All right. Um. Did anyone do the most recent Windows update thing? I tell you why, because since I'd done the last one, every time I try and shut down now, it says update and shut down or update and restart. It seems to be stuck because usually you do the, the update thing and it says update and restart, you update, restart, and that's it. But that message still is still there all the time. Update and restart or update and shut down. Anyone got any advice on that? Be pleased if you had any, OK? But well, oh, let's just open the phone line very, very quickly. If anyone wants to call in, phone line's open there, all right? But you'll have to be quick because we're going to finish off shortly. 020-8144-34... I forgot to open those earlier. 020-8144-3477 is my phone number. Local London number, 020-8144-3477. Uh, I've also got Skype. If you want to Skype in, my Skype username is, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. So once again, the phone number... 
3477 or Skype in on United Kingdom Talk. Good afternoon to Dino, who joins us this morning. Very late today, aren't you, Dino? Cool, dear. Very, very late today. Right. Um, uh, there we are. Look at this. Now, King Jing... Kim Jong-un. Uh, here's, here's something on King John Un this morning in this morning's Daily Mail. Kim Jong Un loves the theme song to the movie Rocky and the TV series Dallas. We've got something in common. Me and King Jong Un. We love Dallas. Yes. In an interview. Um, with the magazine Du Jour. Du Jour. Is that any chance French? But, oh, they're at election today, aren't they? It's all happening there. But is it a, it's a funny election, and it? This, this doesn't choose who's going through. Isn't it like a primary election? I don't understand it. Why do they make it so complicated? Just do it like we do it. You just have a couple of names on there. Theresa May, Jeremy Corbyn, put across. How easy is that? Oh, no. They do that, and then they do that, and, oh, God, it's so complicated. Um, in an interview with De Jure magazine, the former NBA star says that his friend is misunderstood by both the mainstream media and the public and is just like anybody else. This is King Jong-un. And despite King Jong-un's constant threats to attack the US, Rodman claims the North Korean leader told him, I don't want to bomb anyone. Do you know I could believe that? I could absolutely believe that. I think that quite often we're being fed a load of lies. What do you reckon? Huh? I do. I th it's fake fake news. It's all fake fake news. It's all fake news. As Donald Trump says, it's all fake news, boys and girls. We're fighting the fake news. Fake it's news. fake, phony, fake. Fake. A few days ago, I called the fake news the enemy of the people. Enemy and of they the are. people. They are the enemy of the people. Fake news. They're very dishonest people that I call the fake news fake. the enemy of the people. The fake news. Fake. And now I'm saying, oh, no, this is no good. But you are fake news. Fake. But I am only against the fake news media or press. Fake. Fake. Fake, fake news. It's all fake news. Uh, this bloke as uh, so uh, Rodman says... Uh, he jokes and loves playing basketball, table tennis and pool. They love American 80s music. Duh, duh. And they do karaoke. I can get a job in North Korea. Chris Reardon's karaoke. I wonder how, how, how well that would go down in North Korea. I think they'd appreciate it. I could turn up with my tens of thousands of songs and just go and do a karaoke in North Korea. I think that would go down very well. Yes. He's got this 13-piece girls' band with violins he loves. Uh, he loves The Doors, Jimi Hendrix. When I first went, the live band only played two songs for four hours. The theme song's from Rocky and Dallas. <laughs> da, 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 da. It goes on. Of Kim's nuclear plans, Rodman says, he says the reason why they have the nuclear bombs is because they know the Americans think they can take over. He says, I don't want to bomb anyone, but we keep our nuclear weapons because we're such a small country. Well, it's, it's, that's understandable, isn't it? That's understandable. That's the only way we can defend ourselves. They just want people in America and the government to know that they don't hate Americans. They want to work with Americans. So I think, I, I think there's, a, there's an opportunity for me there. I think there's an opportunity for me to do karaoke in North Korea. What do you reckon? <laughs> All right. Uh, Dino says um, it's a general election in France. Oh, is it a general election? So whoever wins gets something, do they? It's not like a primary. For oh, it's all very confusing over in France. I don't know. Do you know, I don't even know what to say in half the time, those French. They speak very strangely, dear. I had to put keep putting subtitles on my telly. I do. Right, let's do today's birthdays. And then uh, I must get going and, and sort the rest of my uh, holiday stuff out. Oh, just before, uh, Eurovision next Saturday, isn't it? Eurovision. Now, there is someone, unfortunately, a regular viewer to this programme who is, is, is on another planet, basically. It's Simon Keane. Simon Keane is about to be um, uh, let go of £20 because he has bet me... Like, 
you're going to laugh. Are you sitting down? Because you may wet yourselves when you hear this. You may wet yourself. Simon Keane is convinced that we, the UK, are going to win the Eurovision Song Contest this year. ba 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 Ba, 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 ba. I changed key then. Did you notice that? Simon, what planet are you on? Simon says, Mr. Chop Chop, are you ready to hand over £20 when the UK win Eurovision? We are 33 to 1 with betting shops in the top quarter, well, in the top quarter, in the top one to four of the betting. And Chris... When you did karaoke last Sunday at camp... Hang on a minute. What are you doing, dear? Can we have one subject at a time, love? And where's the punctuation in here? There's one... There's a question mark and there's a comma. Oh, God's sake. Anyway, he is convinced that we're going to win the Eurovision Song Contest and he's bet me £20. I mean, that'd be the easiest £20 I've ever got, that will, Simon. I'm telling you that now. Number one, the song is dire. It is dreary as anything. It is a depressing... You want to kill yourself after you've heard the song. And number two, they hate us. Who's going to vote for us? They're not going to vote for us, dear. We are not going to win the Euro... If we win the Eurovision Song Contest, you'll be getting 20 quid off me, but it's not going to happen. Do you know, I'm not even going to bother taking the 20 pound out of the bank. So, I mean, I have said to Simon, after this, you know, this conversation's going on, I'll do him a deal. If he wants to pay his bet now and send it straight to me, I'll reduce it by £5 to £15. That's how confident I am that you're going to lose. We are not going to win the Eurovision. So I wouldn't be surprised if when we go on, everyone starts booing. You know what they're like. They like a good old poo. Boo. They like a good boo, don't they, those Europeans there? They hate us. We are not going to win. If you want to pay your fine, your, your lost bet now, I will reduce, like they do with penalty tickets, I will reduce your bet by £5 to £15. Thank you very much. OK? However, if you want to string it out, then it would be the full £20 that I will be requiring from you. OK? Easiest money I've ever made. You saying that we're going to win the Eurovision Song Contest. That is the fact. That is, you know, I, I've, I've seen your jokes, Simon. As you know, as you know damn well, I'm not a fan of your jokes. But that joke, that is the best joke ever of all the time. You telling us that we're going to win the Eurovision Song Contest, dear. No. Even Kevin Webster says we never win. Adam's just joined. Good morning, Adam the plumber. Bit late, love. We're nearly finished. Only been here an hour. Where have you been? Don't tell me you've just got up. That is terrible. You're not having one of those duvet days, are you? Oh, why do people have those duvet days? Terrible. Lazy people. Uh, Kevin says Abbott was the best. Of course it was. Wendy likes Greece. I haven't heard the Greece one yet, Wendy. I haven't heard the Greece one yet. All right, let's uh, do today's birthdays. And then it's time for my... I have to put my dinner in the oven. Uh, I've got a, a, an onion and mushroom pie, which is only one day out of date. I think that'd be all right, wouldn't it? <laughs> and the sun's come out here. Someone asked for sun earlier. There you are. I've made it happen, OK? Happy birthday today to Ian Newbury. Long time since I saw you, Ian. Happy birthday, Ian. Uh, Stuart Owers. Happy birthday, Stuart. Mars Marie Cecile de Mont Carfu. I think I've got that right. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Uh, Dan Dusen. Uh, is it Dukan or Dusen? I'm so sorry. I don't know. Dusen or Dukan Danielle is 39 today. Uh, Hayley Charles is 27 today. Denise Martin. Lots of ladies today. Happy birthday, Denise. Uh, Isaac. Ah, oh, my very good friend, Isaac. He's a wonderful singer. Very, very nice man. Isaac uh, is his birthday today. Happy birthday, Isaac. Rob Parton today is 33 years old. Michael Powell, you're 67 today. Phyllis Wolf, Happy birthday, Phyllis. Jade. Ah, oh, Jade. Jade Ady, who used to come uh, dancing when I DJed at Heaven. Happy birthday, Jade. OK. Uh, and Lance Bostick is 35 years old. They're all the birthdays this morning. Let's sing the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. A 
happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthdays. Enjoy your birthdays. No, we're not doing duvet days. I'm glad Adam isn't doing a duvet day. That is just, I think that's just horrendous. You know, getting out of bed, taking the duvet down on the uh, settee downstairs and sitting there the whole day under... A, what is all that about? We never did that when we were children. We was out doing something, weren't we, eh? Anyway, so Sunday night tonight, boys and girls. Remember, uh, if you're in the Sydenham area, it's our very last karaoke at the Golden Lion in Sydenham. I've had a lovely time there working with that family. There's um, uh, Linda. She's the landlady. There's Tony. He's the owner. There's Gary, his son. He's the owner as well. There's... Um, who's the bloke I always have a laugh with? Oh, gosh. Can't, uh, I can't remember his name now. Oh, Irish bloke. It's not, oh... Oh, God. He's so funny. Really get on well with him. Is it Al No, it's not Alex. Alan? Alan? Oh, I, I wish I could remember his name now. Archie? Not Archie. Can't remember. Can't remember. But such wonderful people I've worked with, uh, both at that pub and they had the cherry tree in uh, Dulwich before that. and uh, But it's time to go now, so... Uh, no no hard feelings there and thank you very much for the work uh, that's it today then boys and girls thank you very much uh, on holiday from tomorrow you should see some recorded shows at some point okay and uh, apart from that enjoy your Sunday and I'll see you soon thanks for watching and listening cheerio now